So here we are in January, over a month since my leak disclosing the RX 6700 XT specs, performance estimates, and expected competition came out. And in some ways, not much has changed since then. Products are still flying off the shelves no matter their prices, but in other ways, a lot has changed since the reveal of the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. The aggressive pricing and VRAM amounts on the 3060 make it clear, at least to me, that Nvidia is aware they could be in for a real fight in the mid-range, which was, well, the focus of my RTX 3060 video, talking about how Nvidia is clearly launching a card they were not intending to release. It was completely against the way their uh, lineups, VRAM amounts are organized and against the pricing they would normally want to go with. They didn't want to release that card. They know they're in for a fight, and that fight is, of course, with the 6700 XT. Now, why would NVIDIA be worried about it? Well, based on recent information I've gotten from a couple of sources, I think I know why. Basically, I am hearing that the 6700 XT is in a good position to dominate the mid-range if AMD wants to and can supply enough cards, of course. That's right, actually. That's what this video is about, an update to the 6700 XT. I interrupted work I was doing on a fairly large Intel Z and Alder Lake update video uh, to bring some tantalizing snippets on Navi 22. And actually, before I do that even, let me just remind you of what has been communicated so far. And uh, by the way, I don't talk about previous videos to brag about when I get things right. It, it, it's to refresh your memory. Um, and if you don't need a refresher or you don't want me to remind you what's been said before, well, fine, you can skip ahead. But actually, I have to refresh myself on what my previous leak said. So let's just remember quickly what's been said about Navi 22 so far. Of course, the first real in-depth info I had on Navi 22 was in that initial just everything RDNA 2 leak from months ago. You know, here you can see the snippet that I think pretty much most quickly summarizes what I was communicating. And right below saying that the 6800 would crush the 3070 and cost between 450 and 600. Of course, that's MSRP. I can't control the market, guys. I also said that from what I was hearing, Navi 22 was indeed 40 compute units above a 2080 Super in performance with 12 gigabytes of RAM and likely the same or slightly higher price compared to the 5700 XT. And honestly, AMD could have launched this sooner if they had the capacity, but... They didn't. And then, of course, I did its own leak, a Navi 22 video in early December that confirmed a lot of the stuff I wasn't 100% sure about, but turned out to be dead right on about for the most part. And that's that you're seeing high clock speeds just like Navi 21 with 40 compute units with infinity cache, but less of it. Of course, I then later confirmed a couple days later that it's actually 96 megabytes of Infinity Cache, so not drastically less, I suppose, uh, and that the performance was indeed above the 5700 XT, despite having a 192-bit bus as opposed to the 256-bit bus, but that it was unlikely to decisively beat the 3060 Ti and raw rasterization performance. And then, of course, the rest of what you see there. So in a nutshell, Navi 22 always sounded like a fairly impressive card, given the fact that it was going to go with a smaller bus to give you a cheaper, lower power mid-range graphics card, but that the performance, though stronger than the 5700 XT, was never assured to be closer to something that close to a 6800, which really shouldn't have surprised anyone when I tried to make sure the fanboy train doesn't get off the rails in December. I mean, it does have, you know, 40 compute units compared to the 60 in the 6800. It, it shouldn't be within 20% of that. It really shouldn't be. However, it does sound like it's mostly good news today, not bad news. Let me confirm what I've been hearing as of this week about the 6700 XT. All right, so this is the mid-January update to Navi 22. So, top Navi 22 gaming edition. Again, I'm not going to focus on what I've communicated about the professional lineup right now. 
Um, 40 compute units, and I'm just sticking to the same clock speeds that I have communicated pretty much the whole time. However, I will say now that I am hearing the latest models have 16 gigabit per second of GDR6, so that is higher than what I expected based on performance I was communicating in December, and of course that's with 12 gigabytes over a 192-bit bus. Additionally, it has 96 megabytes of Infinity Cache. Again, I confirmed this a while ago, but I never really put it in big letters in a video, so just confirming that. And based on recent feed feedback, this is the juiciest part, it should at least trade blows with the 3060 Ti, and it could even beat it. So remember, I always I thought in the beginning that it would be stronger than a 2080 Super, which the 3060 Ti is a bit stronger than the 2080 Super, but in December, it sounded like it was going to be maybe more of the trading blows department. However, I don't know. I think it could win. It could actually beat it, and I'm also hearing that AIB versions of Navi 22 are likely to just get the same type of coolers the 3070 got for the non-reference models, and so they should clock incredibly high, especially given how mature 7 nanometer has become by now. I'm hearing that yields for Navi 22 are expected to be excellent, and um, even still, AMD will be producing reference models that hold to MSRP, not saying anything about availability, but I am saying that AMD will actually keep producing reference models, unlike NVIDIA and like they have done for the Navi 21 cards. Additionally, no updates on power consumption. I've heard absolutely nothing recently, but given the performance I'm being told about, I would not be surprised if now it's firmly above 200 watts as they try to just make a card that is half the die size of Navi 21, so they can sell two instead of one for the same TSMC capacity, but just clock it as high as possible to try to fill the upper mid range. And again, not confirming pricing. I don't, you know, I can't really ever be sure what they will price this at, but to me, it does sound like they're going to price this next to the 3060 Ti now. Um, especially, you know, if you remember, I said I, I think AMD was getting a bit worried about 3060 Ti hitting its MSRP. That's clearly not happening. And so I think now that they see they can make decent margins, they are just going to release this next to that. And it is cheaper to produce, by the way, even if they price it higher or the same. It is worth mentioning that AIBs are confirming the 6700 XT is cheaper to produce than the 3060 Ti. So there's no reason for them to price it higher if they do, but they might. When cut down Navi 22, there's really not all that much to say about this. There have always been at least two cut down models of Navi 22 that, frankly, have been talking about for just months and months and months now. Uh, but And there was that professional card with 10 gigabytes, so I know that's out there. But at this point, I was kind of wondering if they would make a 6 gigabyte 6700 to combat a potential 6 gigabyte 3060 for under 300. But, and again, this isn't from any source, but at this point, I'm forced to conclude that they'd probably just give it 12 gigabytes and price it above 300. And as always, there is room for a 10 gigabyte 160-bit cut-down version or a 6 gigabyte extra cut-down, you know, kind of 5600 XT replacement model. But in the current market where everything's selling for higher prices, I just don't see them doing that anytime soon. So to me, that actually sounds pretty goddamn good. And assuming I don't get some surprise last minute update in a month or so that says ah it sucks and i hope i don't i'll tell you if i do it sounds like a similar story to navi 21 you know it always sounded good but then the hype train started to get off the rails you know just like you had people saying the 6900 xt is gonna beat the 3090 by 20 percent so you had people saying somehow a 40 compute unit navi 22 is gonna crush the 3070 no that's not gonna happen but they both got closer than I think a lot of people expected, and at the right price, which is a whole other discussion, obviously. Um, this sounds like it can be a pretty god dang great card. So what do I think was going on, though, with this communication back and forth on Navi 22? Well, I've already kind of alluded to it, but I think AMD was planning to slot this sucker right next to the old Navi 10 price points at first, but then the 3060 Ti showed up and it was pretty close to a 3070 in performance and when they looked at the insane margins of navi 21 they started wondering i don't know why we would launch navi 22 it's not going to look amazing next to a 400 dollars 3060 ti and uh i mean god we're making so much money on navi 21 that we can't even keep in stock should we even release this card uh, actually on that note I heard a couple weeks ago that one of the 
most interesting parts of AMD's CES presentation was going to be unveiling the 6700 XT, but because they're unsure of when they want to launch it or even if they wanted to, they didn't show it off. I mean, that's that's what <laughs> why their CES presentation was so goddamn boring, if we're being honest. They didn't show off what was going to be the main piece of that presentation, Navi 22. But what I'm hearing now is that they do plan to release it. And in fact, in that CES presentation, they did confirm that it's coming out the first half of 2021. And so maybe not early in the year, but yes, it is coming out. And based on what I am told, it will be released to consumers. It's not just going to be for laptops. I can't confirm how much stock will be supplied to consumers on desktop compared to laptop, but it will be released. And if it is released at a reasonable time frame, I'm, I'm actually hearing around May, but again, it's, it's really up to whenever AMD wants to, I think it actually could find quite a competitive place in this market. From what I'm hearing, NVIDIA is switching more of their production away from the 3060 Ti and towards the 3070 because, well, they both cost about the same amount to make and they're finding Apparently, people will easily pay over $600 for the 3070, and that is by far at this point their most profitable card in their Ampere lineup. So the 3060 Ti, as of now, sounds like it might not be getting as much more stock moving forward. And then when you look at the 3060, that card always had thinner margins than the GA104 card. So I suspect, not confirming, but I suspect a majority of the 3060 stock will go to laptops. So with all of that in mind, the 3060 really not being, you know, that powerful despite getting 12 gigabytes of RAM and then the 3070 getting the majority of the GA104 supply now, there's just room for a $400 to $450 mid-range card from AMD that if pushed farther on this mature 7 nanometer node, finds a good place for itself in the market. And so, yeah, I hope they can supply a reasonable amount. I hope that miners don't find a way to get high hash rates out of it, which AMD intentionally put some things into uh, RDNA 2 so that it wouldn't be a great mining architecture, unlike Ampere. So there, there is hope that it could come into stock in a more meaningful way than Ampere. And if it does, then cool. This sounds like AMD is not abandoning the upper mid range as i thought it sounds like they may be the only ones making cards for it and of course i don't want to get into the pricing discussion you guys have probably gotten your fill of what i think about the pc prices in this market right now if you listen to broken silicon and you know what if you do want to listen to broken silicon you can get it early and ad free if you support us on patreon and there are of course exclusive podcasts like die shrink that come out every week one coming out tomorrow as well and so remember if you do like this video please consider supporting us as 2021 is a year of consolidation and growth for the channel where we hope to expand the team quite a bit to keep the content level we put out consistent and higher quality with a real studio and of course if you, that's only if you have the extra money if you you don't please like the video share it subscribe to the youtube channel we appreciate all of our fans and so to all of you as always thank you for watching <laughs>